Hey everyone. <clears throat> hey everyone, my name is Emmanuel, also known as Yatuza, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make music like the artist on Simple Maze. So, without further ado, let's get out. So, without further ado, let's get into the project. Okay, so before we get started, I want to go ahead and show you the track that we're going to be breaking down today. So the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at today is going to be the drum bus. So let me just play the drums for you in solo without any of the other elements. So before we get further into the project, I just want to let you guys know that all the samples that you can hear on today's project are part of the Bristol Tech Bass Sample Pack available on our website. So if you want to go and check that out, don't be afraid to head on over to dmbacademy.net. So for the first element, we have the hi-hat and I've chosen the Bristol Tech hi-hat number two. And I have maintained the original pitch of the sample and I have placed the first hi-hat on the third beat. And then I played around with the placement of the other three before it repeats itself. And I have this one sitting at zero dB. So the next element of the drum loop is going to be the kick. I'm using the Bristol Tech kick number three. So I have the first kick on the first beat here and then the second kick just right after the first snare. But instead of it coming back to the first beat, I just kind of duplicated it in the same placement as the second snare. And I have it come back to the first beat right after it loops. I also have this one sitting at 0 dB and we can take a look at the snare now. So for the snare, I have the Bristol Tech snare number three and I have it pitched up plus four semitones. And for the tonal layer that you hear, it's actually a perk from the same sample pack. This is perk number one but I have pitched this up with some frequency shifters. So I have the first shifter set to the frequency mode and I have it fine tuned to 235 Hertz. And then I have duplicated it and fine tuned this one to 195 and then shifted it once more and fine tuned it to 235 Hertz again. I also have a convolution reverb pro, which is native to Ableton and max for live and the decay is set to 4.13% with a size of 68.5 and the dry wet is set to 50%. So let me just turn off all these frequency shifters and the convolution reverb so you can hear what it sounds like without me post-processing it. This is set to minus 8.6 dB and it's layered with the main snare. So I'm making sure that the transient of the main snare is untouched and the perk layer comes right after the main transient of the snare. So for the bus, I have some post processing on it as well. And I have the spectral time effect from Ableton and I have the dry wet that is from 0% and it goes all the way up to 68% just right before the drop. I have also automated the time parameter. It starts at 10 milliseconds and it goes up to 222 milliseconds. And the feedback parameter is also automated and it starts at 0% and 
all the way up to 67%. So let's just hear what that sounds like. And I make sure to turn it off when the drop comes in. I also have a glue compressor, which is clipping the signal so that any of those peaks that go above zero are getting soft clipped. So for the main drum bus, I have no post-processing on it, but I would usually wave shape it. So let's go ahead and add a image line wave shaper and just increase this curve a little bit. So the next group that we're going to look at is going to be the tops bus. For the tops bus, I decided to get a little bit creative. I am using the FX loop number four and I am making it percussive with the LFO tool. So this is what it sounds like without the LFO tool. And I have the LFO tool set to this ramp right here and at the rate of one over 32. I'm also making sure that the auto filter is cutting out all of those low frequencies and the cutoff frequency is set to 424 hertz. I also have another effects loop here for the variation. So I'm using the effects number 16 off of the pack. And let me just show you what it sounds like without the LFO tool. And let me just turn it on for you. So it's generating quite some interesting percussion, especially when it's layered. So this is what the tops loop and the drum kit sounds like all together. Now, as you can hear, there are some slight variations when the other percussive loop comes in. And this is because I am pitching the perk one shot nine semitones up. For the first time it comes around, it is zero semitones. And for the second time it comes around, it is plus nine semitones above. And this is what's generating that variation on top of that snare. And you can also hear that I have modified the LFO rate near the end of the first half of the drum loop. So this is just with the LFO tool. I am automating the rate here. So it starts at, 50, at 0 0.65 and then it goes up to 0 0.69, 0 0.70, 0 0.72, and then it comes down to 0 0.65. And this is what generating that faster rate. So let's head on over to the effects bus. So for the effects bus, I have an FX sample. This is effects number two, just to be exact, and I've just chosen the tail of it and made a fade out in the volume. And at the end here, I do have another effect sample. This is effects number 14, and it's just at the end of the bar, just to create some variation. It's like a glitchy sort of sound that fits perfectly with the context of the tune. So for the pluck here that I've made out of this effects, I have it with a hybrid reverb and the decay is being automated in the intro. So let me just show you what that sounds like.
it's just a small counter rhythm that keeps the things interesting inside of the track. On the bus, I don't have any post-processing onto it, so let's move on to the intro now. So this is what the intro sounds like without any of the drum or hi-hat loops. So the first thing that you hear is the kick that is being filtered in. And as you can see, I have the cutoff frequency of the filter being automated. So it starts at a very high point at 9.24 kilohertz, and then it starts closing down to 399 hertz. It goes back up to 5.59 kilohertz. I also have a EQ8 that is being automated and it is sweeping out all that low end. So it starts at 186 hertz, and then it opens back up to 10 hertz. I also have a third EQ8, and this is cutting out all the high end, and it starts at 94.6 hertz, and it goes up to 18.7 kilohertz. Let's just listen to this kick roll by itself. So I have this sitting at 2.1 dB, and for the pad that you're hearing, I just have an auto filter set to 293 hertz, and this is the pad number six. Cool. And the original pitch of the sample has stayed intact. I have not modified that at all. Now for the other element that you hear in the intro, I am using the Bristol Tech lead number two, and I am using the loop function inside of the native sampler inside Ableton. I also have an auto filter that is being automated, and it starts at 3.49 kilohertz, and then opens back up to 19.2 kilohertz. I'm also using Bass Class Easy Washout. If you want to check that out, it is a free add-on that you can find on Google. So I have it started at 35% and then it goes back up to 127. And this is creating that washout reverb effect on this lead. The volume is set to minus 11 dB. And I have also automated the volume. So it starts at minus 14 dB and then it goes back up to minus 8 dB. So if I didn't choose to loop the sample at the place, this is what that would sound like. So the next element is just some FX samples and I have these sitting at minus 14 dB with the original pitch and no post processing into them. And this is FX number 8 and the second one is FX number 13 just with some fade out and with some fade in automation. The next element in the intro is the Bristol Tech Pad number one. And I have an auto filter with the band pass setting. And it starts at 225 hertz and then it goes down to 26 hertz. So this is just creating some extra harmonics in the intro. Lastly, I have the Bristol Tech Pad number five. And I am automating the volume. So it starts at minus 18.5 and then it goes up to minus 7 dB. The pitch has stayed the same and I have no post processing onto it. I have just automated the volume and I have sent it to the standard reverb on Ableton. So the next thing that we're gonna be taking a look at is gonna be the bass bus.
So the first base that is part of this loop is the Bristol base number 16. I have just chosen a place during the end of the loop here that I'd like, and I have started off the base loop with this one shot. And for this one shot right here, I have reversed the base. So as you can see, this is how it would usually start. And when it's reversed, this is what it looks like. So I then just have it repeat during the track, but that would be it for the main base one shot. I have no post-processing onto this and I have it set at zero dB. Now for the second base element that I have on the track, it is a small segment of the bass loop number 44 and this is what it fully sounds like without me snipping a small segment of it so i've just gone and sliced it at a very small portion of the loop the pitch has stayed the same and i have the volume set at minus 2.8 and i have sent it to the native reverb on ableton for the next bass element it is also a small segment of a bass loop and this is what the full sample sounds like So I'm just using that tail here at the end and playing with that. I have a convolution reverb as the post-processing with the decay set at 4.13% and the size at 200%. The dry wet parameter is set to 7.48 and that would be it for the convolution reverb. The volume of this sample is at 0 dB and let's move on to the next bass element. So for this bass element, I've stayed with the same rule of just choosing a spot inside of the bass loop that I really liked and I'm using Bristol Tech Bass number 14. Let me show you what the whole bass loop sounds like. So I just like this end part right here, and I've stuck with that and just combined it with all the other bass elements so that I can make an answer and reply from them. So this is what we've got so far. So for the next bass element, I have followed the same rule that we have been seeing on the other bass one shots. And this is what that main loop sounds like. And I'm using this as the mid-high frequency layer. And I've duplicated it near the end of the bass loop. And this is what I've got with this pattern right now. Just a very machine-like pattern and rhythm. And I have and I am using the shifter here as well, with the fine tune being automated in the frequency mode. So I have it to zero during the first drop. And then when the second drop comes in, I have it go up to 500 hertz. So let me just show you what that sounds like. And then near the end of the loop, it goes down to minus 500 hertz. So apart from the shifter, I have an EQ weight, just cutting out all the low end at 435 hertz. And I have the Xenology effects with the sustainer preset. Apart from that, I have the thermal VST, and I have chosen the floor shaker preset. So the auto filter is just being automated in the intro, just so it teases that layer in. And I have it easy washout automated in the intro as well, so that it creates a big reverb before dropping and then going fully dry. Let me just show you what it sounds like in the intro onto the drop. And I have this layer set to minus 4.2 dB. 
So the last layer that we're going to be taking a look at is the main sublow layer. And this is space number 32. So this time I'm using the beginning of the sample. And this is the pattern that I've made just by slicing that sample up. And I have it in the same placement of the mid-high layer so that it sounds like it has been synthesized similarly. And I have no post-processing onto this. So I'm just using this as the fundamental sublow layer. So let's just listen to all of those layers now and the bass bus. So when you hear that it becomes filtered here at the middle, I'm just not including the sub layer here at the end. So it sounds filtered because I have cut out all the low end from it. So if it plays by itself, it does sound like it needs that sub low frequency. So I've played around with that and I've removed the sub low layer so that it creates some variation within the bass loop. So that would be it for today's idea. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Again, my name is Emmanuel, also known as Yatuza. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.